no the book the book cover cover in one sitting okay so you can also uh, mention here that you are a voracious reader or you could say uh, I am an avid reader or um, you could say I'm a bookworm. Uh, yes a serial bookworm or um, you could say I'm a lifelong lifelong bookworm if you're not, you can say, well, I'm not a lifelong bookworm, but uh, so or you could say life without books would suffocate me. Life uh, without books would um, suffocate me. What does it mean suffocate? Dushit. Dushit? Yeah, the dushit. Mm -hmm. So it means it would be hard for me to live without books. Uh, and here's here's also a collocation. Uh, if you don't like, or you know somebody who doesn't like, maybe not for this question, but for another one, you could say, um, I have an aversion to reading. Um, then another thing that you can mention here is that, okay, let me increase this a bit. So another thing that you can um, mention is that books, they uh, broaden your horizons. Oh, yes. So they broaden my horizons or my scope or my knowledge or my outlook. So my horizons or scope or my outlook. Okay. Um, or um, it's kind of you become immersed in another world or you step into another world when you um, when you read books or you are spiritually enriched. To become immersed in another world. Okay, so um, you can also mention that you become spiritually enriched. Okay, so what books do you like to read? Uh, in truth, mostly I prefer to read the Russian classic literature. By this, I mean authors like. Uh, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Bulgarkov, just name a few. Um, in addition, uh, I'm also keen on uh, uh, Russian and English rhymes. Uh -huh. Okay, so you can also mention that, well, these writers often have intricate plots. Mm -hmm. Something like Dostoevsky, for example, um, even if they do not. So, uh, what book did you read recently? Um, uh, the, the picture of uh, Dorian Gray, uh, written by Oscar Wilde, which tells the story of a young man, uh, those portrait ages instead of him, and Dorian uh, pursues a um, libertine life of a wide moral experience while staying young and beautiful. And then his portrait ages and uh, records every uh, scene. Every scene. All right. So uh, you don't have to. It's part one. You won't be able to retell the whole plot here. Mm -hmm. But if you have, just make sure it's two or three sentences. Uh, maybe thirty seconds. I would say twenty seconds. Uh, nobody's going to listen for thirty seconds here. So, uh, but then you'll have the second question, and you can say something. Uh, about it. What did you learn from it, from this book? Um, uh, the main idea of the novel is that uh, human vices and ugly soul cannot be hidden under beautiful appearance. It's crucial to fight uh, with the essence of someone's vices from the very beginning. Okay, so some ex uh, abstract phrases for um, describing a book. You can say it enabled me to get through a sticking point in my life, or um, I managed to look at my at all my problems from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. um, we could say you can also use um, here a uh, an emphatic sentence. It was not until I read this book that I realized that, and so, whatever you realized, 
depending mm -hmm. on the plot. Okay, so why do parents make children read books at an early age? Um, this is because reading books from at an, at an early age stimulates the part of the brain that allow them to understand the meaning of language and helps build uh, key language, uh, literacy and social skills. Okay, very good. You can also mention that it helps to instill a love of learning in their kids because they are uh, they are in their formative years. Ah, yes. Right. It also positively impacts creative problem-solving skills. Um, right. Okay. So it opens the door to the kids' early academic success. Mm -hmm. And set and finally, it satisfies kids' curiosity by providing explanations of how things work. Otherwise, many parents would go crazy answering all those questions. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, well, now, now they have internet, but anyway. What was your favorite book as a child? Uh, well, I cannot highlight any specific book, but as far as I remember, I really enjoyed reading uh, Encyclopedia related to uh, diverse animals about their lives and unique features. And usually, it took me a few days to read um, to read it because I liked it so much that I couldn't put it down. Because I, I was literally glued to the book. Uh -huh. um, then it was a real page turner. Ah, so page yes, turner, yes, that's yes. something that makes you uh, uh, turn pages. So it was a page turner. I And I read this book from cover to cover in one sitting. To cover. It was a very captivating book. Um, it kept me glued to the book until the last page, right? So uh, I used to sit by nightlight, and you can also say when you work till late, or when you study till late, or when you read till late. You can say I used to burn the uh, I, I burned the midnight oil. Ah, yes, I remember. That's another phrase you can also use here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Then, should reading be a compulsory activity for children at school? Uh, in my opinion, reading, reading is possibly uh, the most crucial skill that children learn. And the ability to read opens the door to all aspects of education. Therefore, teachers should foster uh, children's interest in reading, thus explaining the ample opportunities for the future. Okay. So, uh, right. But it's, it can also be a way to breed an aversion to reading. So it mustn't be a chore. Right? Maybe you can, at least you can mention this as, a, as there is an, there is an, well, some people believe this. Others believe it should be, you don't repeat compulsory, say mandatory or obligatory subject. And say it can instill some interest or. No, I do. They, uh, they should foster children interest in reading. Yes, yes. Okay, so which part two topic did you choose? Um, parts, uh, uh, describe your favorite part in your city or town. Um, describe your favorite what? Pa part in your city or oh, town. Oh, part, part. Okay, okay, okay. So if you're ready, please start. Mm -hmm. uh, though the city is crowded with a lot of people, there are some places I would like to go whenever I want to escape from hustle and bustle for a while. Among those places, I like visiting uh, Morinsky Park, one of my favorite parks um, in the city. I should admit that uh, there are a plethora of park zones in St. Petersburg, where uh, in the evenings or weekends people often uh, gather for doing sports or spending their uh, leisure time with nearest and dearest. Murinsky Park is situated just above less than one kilometer from my house, so I quite often go there by walk. Uh, it's just about few time, uh, about few times a week. Um, and there, there are many trees. Not only can I, I enjoy fresh and clean air, 
but also unwind from a noisy, narrow, and busy city outside. Uh, during summertime, when balmy days outside, I'm used to take a book with me and um, hide under uh, the shadow uh, of the tree, getting immersed into the story. Uh, this kind of activity helps to recharge my batteries and forget about problems. And well, this park is always uh, among my short listed ones because it has some magic that uh, prompt you come again and again. Uh, I would definitely recommend uh, recommend to everyone to visit such tranquil and isolated place. Okay, so uh, here is another phrase. Again. I, I saunter in the park enjoying thousands of flowers in full bloom and then uh, for lexical resource. I think it's a golden opportunity to um, to mention some types of flowers that grow there and two or three types of trees that grow there. So what flowers and trees do you remember in English? Uh, tulips. Okay. Uh, well then, uh, carnations. Carnations. Mm. Orchids. Orchids, yes. Uh, or so, uh, or tulips, orchids, and carnations. Uh, try to memorize this. Tulips, orchids, and carnations. So it's like pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, and squats. About sports, about uh, flowers, like uh, tulips, orchids, and carnations, like this. Just uh, so that you do not think about it. And whenever you mention that you were sauntering somewhere, you were walking somewhere in a park or in a forest, mention these three types of flowers. Um, what about trees? Um, or bushes? Uh, um, Here's an uh, example. Like, there are some private bushes and yes, and there are some coniferous trees like pine trees, but you'll surprise the examiner if you say Marjivelnik in English uh, <laughs> rather than pine tree. I, I know. <laughs> Juniper. Juniper. Okay, so birch tree, whatever, poplar, uh, whichever you whichever you remember, uh, two or three. There is no need to mention ten, <laughs> uh, but um, two, three, maybe four maximum. But they should be uncommon lexical items. Okay, uh, good. Now turning to uh, part three, uh, it will be about public places. What are the purposes of public places in towns and cities? Um. Frankly speaking, uh, public places allow people to uh, unwind and recharge uh, their batteries from uh, uh, long working days and uh, so they can enjoy uh, their free time with uh, uh, the nearest and dearest, and uh, make it. So, uh, can also say it can be used to re revitalize community, to keep adults and kids entertained. So it's like a causative construction, uh, and to provide an opportunity for social bonding. Uh. Opportunity. Okay, so, um, right, uh, to provide outdoor recreation can be, um, all right, to provide entertainment services that enable people or citizens to enjoy their time. Okay, mm, good. Now, what interesting public places are there in your hometown? Um. Well, there are a plethora of different places. Uh, for instance, uh, people can go to um, different museums, uh, such as Hermitage, Russian Museum. Uh, and then um, also there are, there are a lot of um, uh, open spaces 
uh, in Yuzman parks uh, when pe people, especially families, can uh, spend the day three leisure time together. How does how do you say in English kegilban? Kegilban? Bowling? Bowling alley. Yes, yeah, so uh, that will be also quite advanced. Um, right, so you could you could mention um, waterfronts and embankments, amusement parks, gaming facilities, sporting venues, escalation. So because these words are quite simple uh, as such, but together uh, you, you show uh, awareness of some collocation. What do you mean? Waterfronts? Well, like water objects. Ah. So, do you think there should be more free public places? Uh, well, I suppose uh, um, what it's, uh, it's better to have uh, the variety of pub, the variety of public places uh, because we we are now living in concrete world with uh, a lot of sky skyscrapers and uh, in some cities it's quite difficult to find uh, uh, tranquil and recreational area uh, where you can uh, relax and uh, enjoy um, and uh, enjoy your time. Okay. Right. So uh, you can also mention that they provide space for recreation, enjoyment, and a sense of belonging. They make cities or render cities more livable for people. Uh, they impact the quality of the urban environment. They shape community ties to neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Um, they feed urban gaps with life, <clears throat> and so on. Um, yes, yeah, some, some expressions like this are possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That is the end of the speaking test.